You're watching Peace Country Presents on CJDC TV. My friend started calling me a musician after uh, 2008. I, I quit my job in Toronto and I said I'm going to be, I took a part-time job and I was like, I'm going to be a musician and people kept asking me what I do. I'm like, oh, I'm not really working right now. And my friend Amber, Amber Lee, um, excuse me, would always be like, no, you're a musician. That's what you do. So because of her, I started calling myself a musician. <laughs> And since about 2007, 2008, um, I've been kind of consistently touring um, throughout Canada and just being based out of Ontario. Kirby, as he is known to friends, family, and fans, is originally from Burlington, Ontario, but he used to call the big smoke of Toronto home. He worked in media as a radio buyer, loved the lifestyle it offered, but his true passion stood out in his mind as well as to those around him. It was fun, it just, it was, I would always talk about music and I was I remember sitting in my office and we were on like the, the top floor and I was sitting there my friend Erin um, we were chatting about music because she was like a, a music music nerd like I was and she's like why you know all this stuff about you know music musicians and some stuff about the industry why are you why are you working here and I didn't have an answer and then like two weeks later that's when I, I was like I gotta I gotta do this music thing or I'm gonna hate myself for the rest of my life. Kirby is a self-taught guitar player and has never been shy to get on stage to entertain others. I was I was in musicals and stuff when I was a kid. I, w I was always singing. I, I love doing that. I used to um, uh, annoy all the people in the change room when we play hockey and I'd sing like like uh, Boys to Men and, and uh, God, Backstreet Except Boys. Except that hockey boys though. Yeah. The stuff that would like my friends, some of the guys thought was hilarious because it would make some of the other guys really uncomfortable. So when you're singing like, I'll make love to you and you're just kind of like tying up your skates. I remember my buddy James like, dude, just do it. It makes Brett, Brett freaks out. And I just did it because it would like, it would irritate the hell out of me. And, but I'd always do that. And I was in musicals until, until I started playing in a band. And I just, I don't know why I wanted to play guitar. I think I just thought it would, it would be cool. I was always noodling on the guitar. And Chicks write. love the guitar. It's funny about that is like my first songs were about girls and I still write songs about girls. But I didn't do it as a way to, to, to pick up women. It was more like, it was a way to be expressive and it make, and this is, it kind of sounds odd, but it's therapeutic for me to kind of make sense of all the crazy crap that's going on in my head. So it really, it is when I don't play or I don't write, um, it gets, it gets really messy and I don't, I can't really process things properly. And then lately I've been trying to work out of this writer's block where I've, I've been forcing myself through it, which has also become this interesting process for me personally, because I haven't hit such a big block in my entire life. But I've been, I've been like noodling on the guitar since I was like in grade six. And then when I hit high school, I started, my friend dropped off this huge stack of, of guitar tabs and chord charts. So I sat there and kind of learned through this, this basic guitar book how to play. And I, I think the first stuff I learned was, was Hootie and the Blowfish. Well, now far from his Hootie days, he has traveled the country 10 times over, sharing his original music. Kirby truly discovered what a small world it is as he was asked to come on stage at a concert in Charlie Lake and a girl in the audience had seen him perform once before and a certain song stuck out in her mind. So I went up and I had this whole room of people just totally captivated and luck lucky for me, one of, the, one of the girls in the audience um, saw me play uh, a year or two ago mm -hmm. and requested a song which kind of blew me away because I'm like, oh. Did she remember? She remembered. She's like, oh, you're the guy that does that princess song. And I had this, this song called When the Princess Won't Sing and she liked it and I was like, I'm more than happy to. So I got that to do. That must be really flattering. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, it, makes it makes me just want to get back on the road and keep touring. And it's funny, a lot of people seem to react to that song, and it, it was just about kind of the end of a relationship, a long relationship I was in in Toronto. And it's very, it's a real song, and it's about a real thing, and I think that's the biggest thing about it, is that people really react to it because it's authentic. It's more or less when I, when I tell people, it's about the last few days that I was with this, this girl that did not, she did, hated singing. Um, she wouldn't do it, and we we dated. I know, right? Who hates singing? I don't know. She, if she saw the interview, she's like, I didn't hate singing. I just didn't want to do it in front of you, and yeah. maybe I don't know. Well, she never sang in front of me. She, I couldn't get her to sing karaoke and stuff like that. Happy birthday, not with all of her friends. Like it really wouldn't happen, and and it drove me up the wall. I was fine if that's who she was, but it really, I was like, it seems singing is so exposing in 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 what it is itself anyway, and and you you kind of take off all worry and everything when you do it. 
storms out of the party, man. She's had enough. She says that's the last straw. Under her breath, she marches down the darkly crowds. So I wasn't the greatest boyfriend, and we had uh, the last few um, days we were together. We kind of breaking up and all stuff and me getting my stuff back and, and having our kind of goodbye moments because we knew we weren't going to see each other and uh, and I asked her to sing because I, I hadn't heard her sing and, and, and we were both kind of crying and stuff and then she sang for me and I was like it was really really heartbreaking and, and beautiful and sad all at the same time and uh, yeah and that was that was kind of the whole thematic part of the song and then we just kind of said our goodbyes and she always kind of got what she wanted and I got my little piece out of that and then we we separated. What did she say? Uh, row, row, row your boat. And it was like quivery and it was really sad. And it's like, and I, and I love I love that people like the song, but it, it was real and, it, and it, it's beautiful and, and heartbreaking all at the same time. And it's it's real and I think everybody has those goodbye moments that are, it's, it's really easy to pick on it for a song idea and keep going back to it. But that particular time, I was like, I just remember leaving going, oh, that sucked. And I was, I had just started smoking it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh. I'm through, but please just go. What the princess wants, the princess gets. And I can't say no to my princess. Before I leave, I have one last. She says, maybe that's just me. Well, in the end, Kirby got his wish of his ex love to sing and a great song to boot. And it's beautiful, right? So, so yeah, that, that was that's kind of the song. And I think everybody's kind of, it's something people can relate to in that sense. So I think that's why a lot of people go, go oh, I remember that. And it's just one of those really crappy moments, but awesome at the same time. You relish the nostalgia of what it kind of represents. And it's funny, it's that how, that's how it sticks to you, right? And I've been going to the open, I'm a host of the uh, Egan's Open Mic. Uh, now Russ, Russ is, is passing the torch off to me, so um, I'm there every Wednesday night. Uh, sign up's at 7.30ish, it fills up fast. Um, and then I do open mic at JD's as well, just to hang out on Sunday afternoons, and that's great, Gid hosts that one. And, um, I'm usually at Whole Wheat and Honey like every morning, every other morning, just to get my day started. I get up, I, I go for a walk, and the sunlight here has just been amazing. I'm getting a tan, people are going to think I was in like, you know, the Caribbean. Peace Country presents. We'll be right back. 